Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Buchanan, for that uh, warm introduction. Uh, it is really a great uh, pleasure to be here today and to uh, have this opportunity to address you all. And uh, uh, it is a pleasure to be here for several reasons. Um, first of all, it is an honor to be at this uh, university. The Australian National University is a highly recognized uh, uh, university. And I know that uh, this university have uh, have uh, more Nobel laureates than any other uh, university in, uh, in Australia, uh, including the vice chancellor of the university. So uh, it is an honor to be at this university. Uh, second, I have to tell you that uh, I, I, um, I have a special feeling every time uh, I'm visiting uh, an academic institution or, an, or a, a, a university because Originally, my, my plan was to become a real academic, to actually become a professor. That was my ambition in life. Uh, and, uh, and I uh, started actually to do some serious research work at partly the University of Oslo and partly at the, in the Center Bureau of Statistics in, in Norway, uh, something called uh, econometrics, statistics and mathematics. And then I was asked uh, in 1990 to become a deputy minister for environment and I and I was very much in doubt because I understood that that would undermine my ac academic career. Uh, so I uh, promised myself to only be in politics for a very few years and I go back to, to do some serious business, uh, to, to do some serious research. But I have been in politics since then, uh, so my academic career be, was very short <laughs> and uh, was not very great. Uh, uh, so uh, so uh, my advice to you is to to stay here. Uh, <laughs> if not, you then you risk ending up in politics, uh, 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 which is also quite interesting, but it's uh, not as serious as uh, what you are doing. Um, so that's the reason why I think it's always nice to be back and, uh, and to, to feel the air of an academic institution like uh, this university. And the third reason why uh, I I really mean it when I say that it's a pleasure to be here tonight is that it gives me the opportunity to share with you some thoughts uh, about uh, NATO and uh, some uh, security challenges we face. I will try to not be too long so we have uh, some time afterwards to have some uh, interactions, some, uh, uh, some uh, uh, questions and some uh, answers from my uh, side. Um, I am um, here as part of an official visit to uh, Australia and uh, uh, NATO, we are based, uh, our headquarters uh, is in Brussels, we are, NATO is a North Atlantic alliance, Europe and North America, uh, so we are in many ways oceans apart, uh, Australia and NATO, uh, but we are the closest of uh, partners. Uh, we have been working together, Australia and NATO, for many, many years in many different missions and operations, uh, uh, including in Afghanistan for many years. And uh, this morning I went to the war memorial and I uh, honored all those who have uh, sacrificed their lives uh, in uh, uh, the NATO mission uh, in uh, Afghanistan. And um, we are extremely uh, grateful for the support uh, Australia has given NATO for many years. Uh, we appreciate the close uh, cooperation with Australia and uh, I strongly believe that the partnership between Australia and Norway uh, and NATO is, uh, is, uh, has been very important but it's actually going to be even more Im important in the uh, years ahead uh, because um, security challenges uh, are becoming more and more global. Uh, it is less and less meaningful to speak about some challenges for European nations and other challenges for uh, uh, nations in uh, this part of uh, the world. We face the same challenges, uh, the same threats, and we need to face them and deal with them uh, together. And uh, therefore the partnership between Australia and NATO will become even more important. And let me just mention three uh, challenges, three uh, areas where uh, uh, we see a more integrated, more global uh, 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 challenges which we have to uh, deal with uh, together, Australia and NATO. The first is uh, 
increased a great power uh, competition. Uh, uh, what we have seen in the recent years is that our global system and uh, values uh, uh, have come under great pressure. We have seen that from uh, Crimea, the, the illegal annexation of uh, Crimea, uh, the continued destabilization of uh, eastern Ukraine by uh, Russia. Uh, we have seen it um, in Syria, uh, in the South China Sea, and uh, uh, with the proliferation of uh, nuclear weapons, uh, not least uh, uh, North Korea. So many of the values, uh, the rules-based order we have uh, tried to build uh, in the, the decades after the Second World War, they are now under pressure. And that is uh, very much linked to the increased great power uh, competition we are uh, witnessing. One very recent example, and uh, you mentioned that in the introduction, is the, is the demise of the INF Treaty. Uh, last Friday, a week ago, um, this treaty ceased to exist. And the INF Treaty is the Intermediate uh, Nuclear Forces Treaty, which uh, is a cornerstone for arms control. Uh, it has been extremely important for uh, security for especially European countries for uh, more than three decades. And the treaty uh, doesn't only reduce the number of uh, intermediate range weapons, including nuclear weapons, it bans them all. And uh, uh, we see now the demise of this uh, treaty because Russia has over the past years uh, deployed uh, missiles in violation of the treaty. Uh, these missiles are nuclear capable, they can reach uh, European cities within minutes, it's, uh, they are hard to detect, they are mobile and, uh, and they are lowering the warning time and therefore also they are uh, reducing the threshold for any potential use of nuclear weapons in uh, armed uh, conflict. So this is one example of how the rules-based order, arms control, is undermined by the behavior of uh, 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 Russia violating the treaty and it uh, highlights the importance of trying to uh, support uh, and work together to build up again also arms control uh, regime. Um, uh, we have seen, as I mentioned also, uh, uh, the, um, actions by Russia against uh, uh, neighbors, uh, Georgia and uh, Ukraine. Um, and uh, it has been extremely important that uh, Australia has been so clear in showing support in calling out Russia's unacceptable actions and in promoting the rules-based uh, order. Um, we are also seeing uh, the uh, impact of the rise of China um, as a stronger economic power, stronger military uh, power, and uh, uh, China's role and influence uh, is another sign of increasing global power competition. Its economic rise uh, is powering global growth uh, and it's uh, quickly becoming a technological leader in many fields. This brings many opportunities uh, financially and politically for uh, Australia, for uh, European countries, from, for countries all, all over the uh, world. Uh, uh, but at the same time, uh, it also uh, uh, means that we are faced with some new challenges. And um, uh, uh, while China represents a very different uh, challenge than uh, Russia, it also uh, raises some implications for the global uh, rules-based order uh, and for our security. We see this in the South China Sea, uh, in cyberspace, and in Chinese investments in critical infrastructure. So we need to better understand the consequences of the rise of China uh, for our security. And one of the reasons why I think it's important that we work together with countries in this part of the world, with Australia, is actually to help each other uh, to understand and also to um, uh, deal with uh, the consequences of uh, the rise of China as an uh, uh, economic and military power. So, uh, increased uh, uh, great power competition uh, is one of the areas where we see that uh, security is interlinked and uh, 
uh, where uh, we see the value of working with uh, a country like Australia. Another area where we see the same kind of challenge uh, is when it comes to uh, fighting terrorism. That's a truly global challenge and NATO has played a key role in fighting terrorism ever since the 9-11 terrorist attacks against the United States. And uh, uh, we have been uh, in Afghanistan for almost 20 years together with uh, forces from Australia. And uh, we do that because it is extremely important to make sure that uh, Afghanistan doesn't once again become a safe haven for international terrorists, where they can train, plan, uh, organize terrorist attacks on our countries. Uh, uh, and we strongly believe that uh, prevention is better than intervention. Uh, so therefore we uh, do whatever we can to try to build local capacity, train local forces so they can stabilize their own countries and fight terrorism themselves. Um, therefore we have turned uh, the mission in Afghanistan, which was a big combat operation with tens of thousands of NATO troops, including Australian troops, or as a NATO and partner countries, um, into a train assist and advice mission where we train the Afghan forces so they can uh, fight terrorism themselves, stabilize their own uh, country. Um, the good news is that uh, this has created a condition for, or the reason why NATO is in Afghanistan is to create the conditions for a, a peaceful, negotiated political solution. And the good news is that we are now closer to a political solution, uh, a peace settlement in Afghanistan than uh, we have ever been before. Uh, and uh, uh, we strongly support efforts to find a political uh, solution uh, because uh, uh, we strongly believe that uh, uh, the only lasting solution to the conflict in Afghanistan is uh, a political solution. Our military presence is to underpin a political and peaceful solution. Taliban has to understand that they will never win on the battlefield and they had to sit down at the negotiating table and uh, that's the reason why we continue our military presence uh, as our uh, way to support the efforts to find a political uh, solution. The idea of training local forces as a way to fight terrorism is also the reason why we do training in Iraq. Uh, we have made a lot of progress in the fight against uh, terrorism, uh, especially in Iraq and Syria. We have to remember that not so many months ago, uh, uh, ISIS or Daesh controlled the territory as big as the United Kingdom in Iraq and Syria. They were threatening actually uh, Baghdad and then the global coalition to defeat uh, ISIS. Australia is part of that, NATO is part of that. Uh, we have uh, uh, helped to liberate all the territory that uh, ISIS uh, held um, um, and uh, and therefore we have made significant progress in the fight against terrorism also in Iraq and Syria. It, it, the, the fight is not over. Daesh is, uh, or ISIS is still there, but at least it is a great achievement to make sure that they don't control any territory uh, any uh, more. Uh, so that's another example of how we work together with Australia in addressing a truly global security challenges, uh, challenge uh, fighting uh, terrorism. The third um, area I will mention is cyber. Cyber is really global. Geography, uh, distance uh, doesn't matter. And we have seen more and more cyber attacks. Uh, we have seen uh, cyber being used to try to undermine our democratic institutions, interfere in, in elections, and therefore we need to make sure that we have safe and secure cyber networks. Uh, NATO has done a lot to strengthen our uh, cyber defenses. Um, uh, we have um, uh, uh, developed uh, uh, rapid response teams uh, on 27 uh, um, uh, standby that can help NATO countries under attack. And we are setting up a cyber uh, operations center uh, at our headquarters in Mons. And we have actually decided that cyber is now a, a domain military domain uh, alongside air, sea and land, recognizing that cyber is as important as any other element uh, of a potential armed uh, conflict and it's absolutely impossible to uh, envisage any kind of military conflict without a very imp uh, uh, important cyber uh, element. That's also an area where uh, we see a great potential for working closer with uh, uh, Australia. 
uh, I signed a, a cooperation program uh, with uh, uh, the uh, Defence Minister yesterday. And one of the areas we have identified where we can work more closely with Australia is exactly uh, cyber. So my message is that um, uh, when we face a more unpredictable world, uh, new threats, new challenges, it is even more important that we have strong international institutions and strong partnerships as we have with Australia to deal with the consequences of uh, increased uh, great power competition, uh, international terrorism and threats from cyberspace. That's the best way to keep us safe also in a more uncertain world.